How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Farming Simulator 19 Survival Series. So in today's episode we are gonna hopefully be seeding but I'm not really sure if we're gonna get to seeding and I'll get to that in a second because we're probably gonna have to do some lime and fertilizer and all of that good stuff but we'll get to that in a minute. Something else that we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade the pickup truck. So I think it was the previous episode where I said we'll probably buy a new pickup truck at some stage. Um, I did figure out, and I fiddled with this for hours and hours uh, to try and fix the hitch uh, problem, which I couldn't do. But what I did find out is, if we change this to a flatbed, the hitch actually works perfectly. So what I thought we'll do is we're going to stick a big bull bar on the front, we're going to stick bigger wheels on this, and we're going to change this bed to a flatbed, which also means we will be able to tow gooseneck trailers, which is very, very handy because I've actually been thinking about buying a gooseneck trailer and possibly even selling this one. Because um, this is a good trailer. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a nice little trailer, but a gooseneck would actually be quite nice. But I might just, since we already have this, I might just keep both because uh, they do have some different purposes, I suppose. But anyway, what we're going to start out with, as usual, is um, clean up after the chickens and the sheep i do think we need to give the sheep some food uh, i'm not going to give the chickens any food right now i think we still have three bags i'll need to check on that uh i don't think i actually gave them that so we can give them that and if we go over there uh chickens are fine sheep not so much so let's grab the massy and the trailer and we're gonna give them some food and that'll give me a chance to um, talk about something something interesting well at least I think it is so some things have kind of changed within this series and when I say kind of changed it has changed but it hasn't really done anything yet so I know that makes very little sense but what I have done is I have installed the... Is it Global Economy? I think it's called. So it's something that I never really understood, to be honest. Is the whole Global Economy thing. Um, am I right in saying it's Global Economy? There's a there's a menu for that. Uh, uh, global, global Company. That's what it is. So I have installed Global Company. And a couple of things that goes with it, like potato washers and all of that good stuff and corn dryers so that is something that i'm definitely going to be looking into very very soon because at the moment buying all of the equipment to do something like corn doesn't really seem worth it to me for the sale price but once you run that through a dryer or um through a mill and you sell the end product then it really does become worth it so that's kind of the point to make things like potatoes and corn and things like that more appealing i guess so it gives us a bit of an incentive to actually do that when now there's not really an incentive uh, because prices are well quite similar compared to everything else and oh there we go caught it and one other thing that's changed so that is something to look forward to we're gonna try and get into some other crops and things like that and hopefully make some good money along the way i mean it's going to be a bit more work than usual but that is kind of the point so yeah i'm very excited for that i've never used global company and i do apologize for calling it global economy um global company and yeah i think it's going to be brilliant i don't know much about it so it's going to be a learning curve for me so yeah just be patient and if you've got any tips or tricks or i don't know just any advice regarding that um please do let me know in the comments below so something else which you probably would have already spotted being in the menus and things like that is i have installed the precision farming dlc so that is going to be something that we're going to have to look into as well Again, something that I know very, very little about, but something that I want to learn. And I think it's going to be really, really cool to, well, to scan our fields and do all of that good stuff. 
And like I say, I really don't know much about it at all. Um, like, very, very, very basic understanding of what it's all about. Uh, but again, we'll learn along the way, and if you've got any any advice surrounding that, I would greatly appreciate it if you could let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, so all of that is basically just brought in to try and make things just a little bit more interesting and not be completely plain and stale, I guess. So one thing that people have been asking is what about seasons? Why don't I well, activate seasons. And I would love to. I, I really, really would. I do enjoy seasons. I haven't, a play, I haven't played on it a lot, but I really, really do enjoy it. The problem is, it's very difficult to do a YouTube series um, with seasons because everything kind of gets skipped because most of seasons is just waiting around for the right time to do something and when you're playing by yourself it's really cool but when you're recording videos most of what seasons gives you gets skipped anyway so that is the reason i don't use seasons on youtube series i might do it someday maybe not on this particular safe game but possibly on something else in the future uh, i could probably do a series where that is going to be a feature of it and I think it would be a nice series but it would be a very very slow series I mean don't get me wrong this is not a, a fast paced series by any means but I just think seasons would slow it down probably by another 50% so yeah unfortunately I don't think we'll ever see seasons on on this particular series uh, I wouldn't say we'll never see it on the channel but yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Right. Um, let's head in here and we're going to do some work on the pickup. So this is obviously going to cost us a bit of money, but that's fine. I think it's going to be worth it in the end. Uh, we'll do a repair on it. $121. Customize. Right. So I'm not going to change the color or anything. I'm going to leave everything as is. And um, that is... Well, we should go for gunmetal. Um, yeah. Nothing extra on that. We are going to go for the flatbed. Um, wheels. We're going to go for the extreme wheels. Uh, not the dually. We're going to go for that. And I like that. Maybe number two. We'll go for that. And anything else? Square lights. We'll leave that. Um, here we're going to do the uh, camel, trophy, and bull bar. I'm guessing that's something at the back. Uh, with a winch, so that's great. The engine, I'm not going to touch. I'm going to leave it exactly as is. We can upgrade to a 460 uh, V8, 239 horsepower. This is 180. I think 180 is fine for now. That's going to be $13,600. I don't want to spend too much money. So we're going to go with that. That's already a, a good chunk of money. And there we go. I, ooh, that looks very beefy. I just, yeah, I, I, I like the truck. But I just wanted it to look a bit more like a farm truck rather than just an old classic pickup. That looks really nice. I like that a lot. That looks very beefy. Right. Um, a gooseneck trailer is probably going to be um, on the cards in the near future. Uh, I would think at least. But um, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm probably going to crash something now trying to look at it but um that is a nice pickup very nice it looks a lot more like a farm pickup now and yes for some reason doing the flatbed um actually fixes the the hitch the trailer hitch so that's nice and yeah that means we don't have to spend a boatload of money buying another pickup and now we've got quite a beefy nice looking um pickup truck so, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to put this away and we are going to start looking at, I think, a scanner, a soil sampler, I should say. Because uh, that's something that we're going to have to do before we can really look into any seeding. So, hmm, I was just up at the farm, but I don't think I can bring that back with 
to pick up anyway. Right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to the uh, shop and we are going to buy a scanner or soil sampler and we're going to get going with that and um, yeah, we'll see what the results are. Alright, that is all of these soil samples done, and this is the little machine that we used to do that. So, it unfolds with the little antenna, and yeah, it takes little soil samples, and I thought it was pretty freaking cool. So, what we ended up with is this. We have got quite a large amount of loamy sand, and the rest is mostly sandy loam. And, yeah, maybe a little bit of just loam. So, um... Yeah, not bad. No, no salty clay. So, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest here. I don't really know what that means. So, I know that is the soil type, but what it actually means in terms of pHs and things like that, I don't really know, but we're, we'll learn. So, yield, there's nothing yet because we haven't harvested. And nitrogen looks terrible, so we're going to have to fertilize. Big time. And pH actually looks pretty decent to be honest. I mean, it's a, a bit all over the place, but it's decent. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to grab a tractor. I'm not sure which one. Um, we're going to grab a tractor and we're going to start liming and we're going to drop into a time lapse for that again. So I do apologize. This episode is going to be a lot of time lapses, um, but we need to get a lot done. I don't think, unfortunately, we're going to get to seeding today, but I at least want to try and get the liming done and the fertilizing done. If we can get that done, we can see it in the next episode. And then I've got some cool stuff that we're going to do while we wait for the crops to grow. So yeah, I was learning with it, this a little bit. I didn't know if I should cover like the entire area. Um, it seems like you do have to. Might have missed a little spot there, but it's okay. Um, it's, it's not too bad at all. Uh, yeah, I might have missed a little corner there, which I can patch up later on. It's not a big deal. It costs about 50 bucks. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed that. So yeah, we're going to jump into a time lapse. We're going to grab a tractor. We're going to grab a trailer or the spreader trailer. We're going to start liming. And for those who do want to know, I am going to be using the automatic um, application. So it adjusts it automatically. Purely because I don't know enough about it yet to try and do it manually. I'll probably make a, a royal disaster of it if I try and do it manually. Um, I need to learn a bit more. So for now, I'm going to use automatic application rate, but I do like this because it's probably going to save us quite a bit of money in the long run anyways, because especially like now with lime, uh, we don't need that much. So I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to apply any, but we'll find out soon enough. And uh, I think I'm going to grab the John Deere for this job or maybe the Voltra. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, but yeah, if if we don't need a lot of lime, then the application rate goes down, which means we use a lot less lime, 
which means we have to buy less lime, which means we have more money. So it, it is actually going to save us a lot of money in the long run, even though that little piece of equipment standing in that shed over there was $17,000. Um, I did choose to buy it new. I didn't want to buy something like that secondhand. Um, obviously in the game, it doesn't really make a difference, but for the sake of a semi role play, um, it's not something I would want to buy secondhand in real life, just to make sure everything works perfectly fine and everything is accurate. So, um, yeah, let's grab a tractor and start liming, and we'll probably head straight into fertilizing after that, and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. Alright, that is liming complete, and this is what the fields look like at the moment uh, with regards to pH. So everything seems to be pretty neutral, which is good, green, yellow, and yeah, I think that's going to be pretty good. So next up is going to be nitrogen, so fertilizer, and that looks horrible. So we're definitely going to have to do something about that and we're going to do that very very soon but i did want to jump in here to let you guys know that i bought something so this is our lime spreader at the moment and um it works great so i found out that there was a bit of a deal going on at the dealership for a second hand another second hand version of this one and i bought it so it is over there so it's exactly the same as what we've got except for the tub on it or the tank or whatever you want to call it um, is galvanized steel. So everything else is exactly the same, same size, same model, same everything. Um, again, it was second hand, but it is fully serviced, washed, cleaned, everything's beautiful on it. I paid just under $29,000 for it. And um, yeah, I think it's pretty freaking cool. So obviously it looks different to that one. And I do want to know which one, if you know anything about this sort of thing, which one is going to be better for lime? And which one is going to be better for fertilizer? Because I think fertilizer might be pretty damn corrosive on a galvanized tank. So um, maybe we should swap it around and put lime in this one and fertilizer in that one. I don't know. If you know anything about this, um, I really don't know much about it. So please let me know in the comments below if you know anything about it. And if you guys say that we should do lime in this one, in the galvanized one, I'll just switch it around and it's no big deal. But for now, we are going to use the new one for the fertilizer. 
Um, we can always clean it out if we need to swap it around. But um, yeah, anyway, that is our new piece of equipment. So we're going to jump straight back into a time lapse. We're going to get the fertilizer knocked out. And I'll catch you guys in a little bit. That is fertilizer done as well, and that is what the fields look like now. A lot better than what they were earlier. So we're going to get those planted in the next episode, or seeded. And I'm not really sure what we're going to do yet. I'm kind of leaning towards some corn, possibly. But that would mean buying some more expensive equipment. And at the moment, we're sitting on $123,000, which is pretty decent. But I do want to try and save that money up as much as we possibly can. So I'm not 100% sure, uh, sure yet. We'll see how that goes. Um, I did want to point out our trees. The trees are looking beautiful right now. They are growing very, very well. And the entrance problem over here is basically sorted, which I hoped it would be. And they grew exactly the way that I thought they would. So we can quite easily get equipment through here without going through a bunch of branches and um, yeah, sort of destroying our paintwork. I also want to run around the back and show you guys over there that our, our newest additions um, in terms of trees to the farm have been growing a little bit as well. So that's starting to look quite interesting uh, back here. We're definitely running out of a bit of space on the farm. Uh, right, chickens made a big mess again. Of course they did. I think we're probably over 300 chickens right now. We can actually check that real quick. Oop. Well, there goes the broom. Right, um, let's have a look. Uh, not yet, 267 chickens. So we're coming up to 300 quite quickly. And the sheep, yeah, they're not as messy. But also there's only 8 of them. Uh, but there you go. There's all of our trees that we put in. Uh, not too long ago and um, yeah they're starting to look pretty freaking good so I think that's going to look quite nice back here. I did notice at the entrance of the back here that we're kind of short one tree. I never put a tree in on the corner because I wasn't sure if we should and it turns out we should. So right over here uh, we'll put a tree in just about there and sort of work with the entrance. I'm not sure if we want to put trees all the way down the entrance. I mean, we definitely could do that. It could actually look quite nice. Um, but that is something that we'll look into in the future. So next episode is going to be seeding or drilling or planting or whatever you want to call it. And also, of course, depends on what seed it is. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty successful episode, I would say. I also came to the conclusion that we're going to keep this trailer um, the idea behind it is this is going to be a wool trailer. So that is going to be its job. It's not really worth selling it. So when we buy the gooseneck trailer, the bigger, I'm thinking about a 30 foot uh, gooseneck. So when we buy that, we will not sell that one. And that one will go probably straight into the sheep pen. We might actually just leave it there and load it up. And when we're fully loaded um, with wool, then we can just hook up and um, sell so we don't have to go there every time with only three pallets so that'll save a bit of time and as i say we've got it already we might as well keep it 
Uh, the little fertilizer spreader here, we'll probably sell that. I don't think it's worth much, but... I mean, any bit of extra money will do. And please remember to let me know which one is better for the fertilizer. The galvanized one or the painted one. I'm still leaning it to painted. Um, but I might be very, very wrong on that. And um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, one thing that I did want wanted to mention before we sort of conclude this is I have noticed that our equipment is starting to sort of outgrow the farm. So we've still only got three fields and we've had three fields for quite a long time and they're not that big. And the one right back there up at the sort of forestry area could be a lot, a lot bigger. So the reason we made it not huge in in the beginning when we actually created the field was because well one we had small equipment and two it was supposed to become a potato field eventually or maybe a sugar beet field and you don't want a massive massive big field because it it takes a very very long time to plant that and to harvest that and all that good stuff but there is so much room around there. When we were working on that field today, I was looking around and there's so much room. So what I think is we might eventually, not this crop, but maybe the next one, we're going to try and make that field a lot bigger. Uh, we might actually, where we mowed the grass, put a big field in there. And then all the way back there behind the field that we've got over there at the moment, there's a bit of space there. We might make our potato fields uh, over that side eventually when we do that. So I'm looking to expand at least one uh, field. This one we can't really do any anything with it. We can't make it any bigger really. And um, that one over there we can't really make much bigger either. But we can use some of the space on the other side of the road for possibly an extra field. And yeah, the one back there is going to become a big field. So that is the plan. And obviously we will scale all of our equipment according to that again. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and I'll see you all next time.